Hey everybody, this is CM Punk and this is The Breakdown. This is The Wrestler. A lot of people told me that I'd never wrestle again. Let's pause it here. The flag he has on the microphone, the ROH on it, that's Ring of Honor. The building they're wrestling in, I've wrestled in. I believe that's the Hammerstein Ballroom. And I wrestled there for Ring of Honor previous to me signing with uh, WWE. You know, in this life, you can lose everything you love, everything that loves you. I love this movie for how real it is, and especially this scene. I just feel a tremendous sadness when I watch it. That tells me how real it is. God damn it. I'm still standing here, and I'm the ramp. He's breaking rules, honestly. It would be like me talking over here and talking up here and talking here when there's a camera right in front of me. He's having a genuine moment. He's talking to the people. He's a loser. He's all through. You know what? The only ones are going to tell me when I'm through doing my thing is you people here. All right, let's pause it here. Somebody's got to tell this guy that he does not, and he should not, wrestle anymore these older wrestlers. There's no pension, there's no union, there's no such thing as the boys, nobody's taking care of them. And it's just, man, it breaks my heart. Jump ahead. <laughs> Everything about this movie is so accurate. I mean, the moves they're doing, I know Mickey Rourke got put through the paces. Arnofsky was very dialed into being authentic and real, and they nailed it. Let's break down this frame. To communicate, the easiest way to do it is just whisper sweet nothings into each other's ears. Or talk as loudly as you possibly can so people in the cheap seats can hear you like John Cena. There's guys that you can wrestle and not say a word to, uh, but normally that comes with repetition. I could put my gear on right now and I guarantee you I could have an entire match with Rey Mysterio and not talk to him once. What are you doing? You see him lean up and he's like, what are you doing? That's my move. Your signature move is what you did. Nobody else did it. In this scene, I think Rams, um, he's, he's losing it. Maybe he forgot that that's not his move. The use of the ref as a distraction, I think if you've watched uh, any pro wrestling match, you know how accurate that is. It's 100%, but it's also very cheap and very lazy. Let the rules be the rules, because if there were no rules, uh, you wouldn't get booed for breaking them. I think you're allowed to bring in whatever you want in the ring when the referee has been uh, knocked out of commission. Rewind, please. And always notice, it's always like the lightest of blows that sends the, the referee sprawling into a state of unconsciousness. This movie is just deadly accurate. <laughs> this is Nacho Libre. I have not seen Nacho Libre. Jack Black's looking good. Oh man. The classic Mexican wrestling whistle to start the match. I've never, I've never seen or heard anybody use a whistle to start uh, a match in wrestling. <laughs> Test of strength. Jack Black's losing this one. That was a weird transition. The moves and everything, the chain wrestling, it's, that's, all, that's all classic stuff. When I said it was a weird transition, they just went from chain wrestling just immediately to like a suplex. There is a way for it to happen organically. They just felt like we missed a couple steps in there. Ah, oh, that's a DQ. <laughs> that's a disqualification. Oh no, he's going for the mask, this is dirty. Let's pause it here. The mask is the luchador's identity. It's his entire life, it's his career. Uh, you try to take somebody's mask off, people are gonna be real, real, real mad at you. Oh wow, that didn't take much. You know, you gotta work it a little bit. You gotta tear the mask a little bit. You gotta act like you're trying to take it off. This dude just went right for it and took it off. No foreplay, you gotta tease me a little bit. But he lost his mask. He should be trying to cover his face. Oh, Jesus. The yeah. monkey flip, that's, that's a real move. How do you do a monkey flip? I mean, I could show you if you want to come over here. Yeah, yeah, you would die. I got a lethal monkey flip. That's why you never saw me do it. I killed my mother, you know, I'm sorry. I, oh, I can swear? You can swear. Yeah. All right, let's go back. You literally just jump on the dude and they let you, per they let you. 
They let you perch on like their hips there and you, you roll back and you kick them into the air. People can flip out of it, land on their feet, over rotate, land on their belly and he just launched him straight over the top rope. Seen it happen a dozen times. And here comes the big Nacho Libre comeback. Oh yeah. He's gonna miss, isn't he? He's missing. Man, I could fly. No, that's not realistic at all. Obviously they use wires or something like that for that. I've seen some gnarly dives from the top rope. Having Rob Van Dam jump from the top rope like into the third row on top of Bam Bam Bigelow. It's always nicer when you have a big, gigantic, tough man to land on. You can't pin him on the floor. Where's the ref? Oh, come on, you lazy piece of <laughs> No, you can't pin somebody on the floor. You gotta pin somebody in the ring. There's rules to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is why the ratings are down. This is Ready to Rumble. I have never seen Ready to Rumble. And a lot of people always give me grief for that. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Dollar 25, that's all I got. That's just not good enough now, is it, you little boo? Just take a penny out of the, take a penny thing. There's a lot of glare coming off that dome of yours, squirrel nuts. Let's pause it here. That's Three Stooges, isn't it? That's Hogan hulking up. That's The Undertaker sitting up. I'm sure people in the, the convenience smart world would recognize that as that guy's signature. That was his Hulk up, you know? Oh, 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 oh. Right into it, all right. Let's pause it here. That's just a basic suplex. The previous clip I was talking about how it just seemed like it was an odd edit or a transition. There was no transition. We were just already there. But I mean, yeah, fundamentally the suplex was, was sound. Anytime you're picking up your opponent and, and throwing them, uh, most notably like over your head, it's a suplex. The easiest way to do that, that was just a standing suplex. You hook the guy's head, you put his arm over your head, you grab him by the waist and you throw him over your head. This is the best convenience store of all time. The most unconventional place I've ever wrestled before is inside a strip club. Hey, there's a, there's That's a it, you just, gl you glossing right over that. No follow-up questions. <laughs> Let's just skip ahead 10 seconds. Oh no. Let's break down this frame. Glass is used in pro wrestling all the time. It's either pro wrestling or it's garbage wrestling. Garbage wrestling is taking everything that is traditional about wrestling and the art uh, kind of out of it and replacing it with ultra violence. Thumbtacks, fire, glass. I used to wrestle a lot for a promotion down in Indiana and in Kentucky. I would be like the exception. There'd be a few of us who would just do, you know, traditional like old school wrestling. I mean, they'd have to sweep the ring out before I got into it because it would just be littered with all this junk. Splintered tables, you know, wood screws, thumbtacks, glass, everything. The light tubes, I think, is the popular thing the kids use. Maybe I did get hit with a light tube once. It's hard to remember sometimes. <laughs> this is Paradise. Paradise Alley. They made a Blu-ray of Paradise Alley, apparently. It's a doozy, I'm sure. I, f I forget what the plot of this movie is, so I, I can't remember what is going on here. Let's pause it here. Pro wrestling was born out of the carnivals. They would go from town to town, essentially beating up the local town folk who thought they, you know, if they paid money, they'd be able to, you know, beat the guy up. Their skill set was pretty impressive because they had to look beatable, but then when shit got real, they also had to just absolutely be able to tear somebody's limbs off. Hey, Kid Greaseball. Hey, Rat. His name is Kid Salami. Say after me, Kid Salami. Mora! <laughs> All right, the name Kid Salami is a hell of a lot cooler than CM Punk. CM Punk's the stupidest name in all of it. Like, what is it? It's just stupid. Kid Salami, at least you're like, ah, oh, you, okay, I get it. He's Italian. CM Punk, you're just like, what? <laughs> Should use the egg to grease up his body so he's slippery. That's not how you fight. Come on. Those punches, though, man, in a real or a professional wrestling setting, garbage. Fast forward a bit. What do you want to do? If I get annoyed, I think I can win. Get annoyed! Yeah, when you get annoyed, would you please get very annoyed? You're embarrassing me here. Here we go. Is there a DVD commentary for this? Because I would really, I would really be interested to, to hear like 2019 Sylvester Stallone commenting on all of this. <laughs> Too late. Too late, Sly. Let's go back. 
the easiest, like most lazy thing. You see somebody like positioned in the corner and you just like walk up to them and you, you ram your shoulder into their, uh, their, their midsection. It's overdone. Was anything in that clip realistic? Uh, <laughs> maybe Sylvester Stallone being embarrassed. Up next, we have Glow. Yes, the music's great. Makeup's great. You can just tell by her mannerisms uh, that she's the heel. One's blonde, one's brunette. Chances are people are gonna cheer for the blonde. The heel has more pointed makeup. You see like the, the mask, what is that called? Mask, is that mascara? What? Eyeliner. eyeliner, eyeliner. Shows you what I know. The big hair, oof, man, that, that just screams bad guy. Let's go back. Wrestling needs a heel because if you have a good guy versus good guy, babyface, babyface match, that's, that doesn't really sell tickets. You have to have that character that you want to see uh, lose, bleed, get beat up, humiliated to get the people to cheer for him and ultimately buy all the merch and waste all of your money on all kinds of things. Let's just skip ahead 10 seconds. I'm just now realizing that the, the entire ring is pink. Snapmare and a cover. Where's the referee? There's no referee. Is the referee just gonna magically appear when the finish comes? Somebody's gotta be there to count the fall. There's gotta be a winner or a loser. Oh, here we go, monkey flip. Classic, oh, classic, classic setup. Crotch in the face, handshake. This is going on way too long. Let's freeze this frame. It would elicit a response from the crowd. An ass in the face, a boob in the face, a crotch in the face, like, I don't know, man. American society just loves that stuff. And flip. Fast forward a bit. Normally there's a five count if you're on the ropes, but there's nobody that would administer said five count. Let's break down this frame. The more surface area of your feet that you have on the top rope, the better balanced you're gonna be. The better balanced you're gonna be, the better launch you're gonna get. If you're standing like, uh, you know, perpendicular with, you know, your foot on the rope that way, less surface area of your foot, your balance can get compromised. And when you jump, you could slip, you could fall. So you kind of want your feet exactly overlapping or parallel with the ropes if you're about to, to jump off. How long would it take for me to like, learn the balance on that top rope? I can get you on that top rope in 15 minutes. You just gotta pay me, let's see, you work for GQ. $75,000. Deal. <laughs> this is Spider-Man. I'm excited about this one. Have you seen this film? Bone saw is ready. The amazing Spider-Man! Kill him! Ah, the bloodthirsty mortals. Let's pause it here. I laughed at the idea of a surprise cage match. <laughs> like, you know, more often times than not, especially nowadays, they have the cage already suspended above the ring. So, you know, fans, all they gotta do is look up and be like, okay, there, there's gonna be a cage match at some point tonight. I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of heat time. They were playing off of the the roots of pro wrestling from like the carnival, see if the, the local can last three minutes with our strong man. The only time you're gonna get a, a, a clock in the ring, some sort of a time limit, you know, Iron Man match. Jump ahead. Oh, that's cheating. Also cheating. Oh. One of my favorite things you can do is tell a pro wrestler that, oh, those chairs that you hit somebody with, those are fake chairs. And I've just never understood what a fake chair was. The chair I'm sitting in feels real. It's doing its chair job. It's holding me up as I sit down. A, like a breakaway chair, but steel chairs aren't, aren't breakaway. There's no nice way to hit somebody with a steel chair. And to sound very boring and redundant, it again comes down to a surface area thing. If I'm on all fours and you're gonna hit me square in the back with a steel chair, you want as much surface area as that chair to hit me in the back to spread out the impact. You know, you don't want to flip the chair, say, so the brim, the edge of the chair, <laughs> repeatedly like, you know, ram it into somebody's neck. And you're really gonna hurt somebody. That being said, you're still really gonna hurt somebody if you hit them the right way. Such is the life of a pro wrestler. It's all fake and it all hurts. What are we doing here? That was awesome. No referee. No respect for the rules. 
Let's break down this frame. You know, some guys are like synonymous with uh, certain weapons and props. I always got a kick out of any time I got to handle the Undertaker's urn, just for the absurdity of it. Somebody's ashes in here. Why does he carry it if he never hits anybody with it? Leave the dead cat in the back, and then you're not gonna get hit with the urn. Monkey flip, They're your favorite. Where'd the referee come from? It's a cage match, nobody in or out. <laughs> This is fighting with my family. I hope to God it's the clip I'm thinking. Who yes. the hell are you? Yes. Yes. Why don't I do to you what I did to every single diva last night? Oh no. Well, the one girl is playing my wife. <laughs> so it's weird, I've never seen that. That's why I was like, oh, I hope it's the clip I think it is. They were trying to film that after, I think it was a Raw. They're like, hang on, we're also gonna film this uh, part of the movie, so Rock comes out. Everybody's excited and he's like, you just stay there, we're gonna film this one thing, you know, do me this favor. And then this woman who wasn't my wife, but was dressed as my wife and announced as my wife comes out, and the entire crowd just started chanting for me. CM Punk, CM Punk and they couldn't get the crowd to stop. So Rock was like, oh, you like, you like Phil? I like Phil, pulls his phone out and calls me. By the time I got in the elevator, out of the elevator, back outside to walk my dog, Larry, my phone was just like blowing up. People texting me, answer your phone. I didn't know what was going on. Let's go back. I think we should have a match right now. And as a special post WrestleMania treat, I will put my title on the line. Let's break down this frame. Yeah, I think everybody just throws the belt over their shoulder. Nobody, nobody seems to just wear the belt. I wore it all the time so I could, you know, I could speak with my hands so the cheap seats could see it. My belt was like huge and ugly anyway, you know, so I, it was too heavy to carry. But I'm a weakling. This is my house, freak! Oh no, that's all it takes. Don't call me freak. It's like calling Marty McFly chicken. Being called a freak was like a button for her, you know? And it was like, don't push that button. Don't give Popeye his spinach. Don't let George the Animal Steel eat the turnbuckle. I think once she heard that, you know, that was the switch that made her just time to put the, the, the pedal to the metal here. To fall in the ring, the easiest way to do it, you want a ton of surface area of your body to hit. That's why you see people like slap out. They do this in martial arts too. Kempo, any form of like, you know, karate, jujitsu, uh, doing rolls, break falls and stuff like that translates directly into pro wrestling. It's all the same thing. Get to the ground as fast as you can, but you also don't want to just land on your elbow. You want to land on your entire arm most uh, surface area you possibly can to lessen the uh, the impact on a focused part of your body. You don't want to land on your neck. You don't want to get compressed. All this sucks. It, it all sucks. You're throwing yourself at the ground. It's nothing that your brain uh, should want your body to do. Uh, and over time, all of it takes its toll. If you take a guy like Hulk Hogan, who had the, the simplest, easiest uh, finishing move in the world, he'd jump up and drop a leg on you, landing directly on his tailbone, you know, compression. Your body gets old and betrays you, and all that adds up and you pay the price. Let's go back. It was pretty accurate. I think my wife had better abs than the, the actress they had playing her, though. I have to say that my wife's abs are out of, out of this world, but they, they found somebody as short as my wife, so I think that's that's very realistic. Thanks for watching the breakdown. 